Today we're going to talk about uh, connecting to the database and how we choose to connect to the database. Um, in previous uh, YouTube videos we've shown how developers might connect to the database and how they would use cursors and arrays and things like that. But we're going to do a topic that really should be thought about from both the system administrator and the system architect. And it's the number of connections that we make to the database and how they connect to the database. Are those connections permanent or are they dynamic? Um, this is a topic that my colleagues within the Real World Performance Group have been dealing with for probably the best part of 20 years. And basically, uh, it's done wrong in many cases. And it's usually done wrong um, because of over-optimistic views of how they think the database can just keep them absorbing more and more connections. The reality of the situation is that there's two things at stake here. One, the database, you cannot add infinite number of connections to the database. And the second thing is the number of connections to the database should ideally be static, should be the same number all the time. Um, unfortunately, today's applications tend to get built in middle tiers and they tend to specify dynamic connection pools. Very often it's a minimum number and then a maximum number. And there's under, people under this illusion that, that basically the application servers will keep on creating connections as required and then potentially cut them back if the load goes off. Well, in fact, this is actually the worst thing possible to do. In fact, one of my colleagues often defines this sort of architecture as a gun ready to go off. Um, if you have the potential to rapidly create a large number of connections, we have the ability to basically destabilize the entire database environment. And for this reason itself, um, we've actually got quite tired of talking to people about this. And for this reason, we've built demos and we've bought, built graphical screens to actually show what happens when the load comes on a system. So to demonstrate the, uh, the challenges associated with both a large connection pool and a dynamic connection pool, what we're going to do is we're going to simulate the load coming on a system in slow motion. So we can actually watch and interrogate a system as the load comes up. Uh, the reason being for that is if we see it in slow motion, we can actually see what is happening and watch a system fall apart in front of you, rather than uh, it all happening in two seconds and the system just falling over and everyone curious as to what has happened. And this becomes particularly important uh, to understand what is happening and how quickly these things can run out of control. So um, we're back using the uh, real world performance demo screens and you'll notice we have basically three windows down the middle which is reporting what we're doing. Now we have a very stable system here running at this point in time. You can notice that the response time from the applications is two milliseconds. We're running at quite a modest transaction rate of just under 2,000 transactions a second. But let's talk about what our user community is doing. What we actually have is nearly 15,000 individual Java threads all playing effectively cards online. And they're basically pressing the button each thread once every 10 seconds. Um, what we've done is we've created a connection pool that can literally go out of control and destabilize the system. The initial connection pool was 144 connections to the database, but we're going to let it grow to 6,000 connections to the database when the load comes on. Now, if we look at the system at the moment, you can see we're barely recording anything on the AWR report or ASH reports. Uh, the CPU utilization is extremely low. And the other thing to notice is that even though the utilization on the system is extremely low, we've already extended the connection pool uh, to over 200 connections to the database, up from 144. Just because the application servers occasionally found that all their connections were busy, we allowed it to grow. And with that in mind, um, I'm going to force it to grow even more, and we're going to watch the system as we start to grow. So I'm going to start doubling up the workload, so instead of everyone pressing the button every 10 seconds, we're now going to make it every 5 seconds. And we'll double this up. And I'm going to continue doubling this up until it gets quite 
interesting and we actually start to make the system yield. At this point, just doubling up the workload, you can see that there's just a tiny increment in the workload. The transaction rate is doubling. The response type hasn't been impacting at all. We're starting to see a little bit of a climb on the CPU utilization, which we can see we're barely even using 7 or 8% of the system at this point in time. So let's double it up in another step. And again, here we go, we've doubled up the workload again. And at this point in time, we can see very linear behavior um, on the system. We're seeing the transaction rate literally double with each step. We're barely impacting the response time. And we're seeing the CPU getting a proportional response coming up as the workload comes up. So at this point in time, people would start to think we've built a linear and a scalable system. The other thing to note is that we're starting to see the connections to the database and the size of the connection pool now is now approaching nearly 500. Okay, so we're really about four times bigger and getting to five, five times bigger than the initial connection pool, yet we've hardly stretched the machine at all. So there's a lot of connections that actually aren't actually even doing anything. In fact, there's 465 at this point in time where we're actually not doing anything at all. We've only got 16 active. And this is on a machine here with actually 24 cores on. So you can see we're not even fully utilizing the machine in terms of sessions per core at this point. But you can see, again, the connection count is increasing just because you get occasional timing glitches where of all the 32 JVMs that we have driving this application, all the connections are busy for one point in time. And so it just pops another connection. So let's double up the workload a little bit more. And then we should start getting into start seeing load come onto the system a little bit more seriously. So we're doubling it up now and we're starting to push the transaction rate much higher. We're getting up into the 15, 16 thousand transactions per second. Thing to note here, you're starting to see a much more noticeable increase in the CPU on the system. And we're approaching at this point 25% utilization on the system. But again, nothing to see in the database on the ASH report, not much to see at the user response time. Now, this is the point in time where very often we see system architects and administrators congratulating each other because they think, wow, we've built this scalable system. But it's only scalable to 25% utilization of the database server. That's hardly the best utilization of hardware resources, software licenses. So let's double up again and see where we get to when we start, hopefully, now that we're going to get to use 50% of the utilization on the machine. So we're doubling up again and we can see, again, a very immediate response. The transaction rate is doubling. We're seeing the CPU work workload doubling and we're nearly at 50% utilization on the system. Barely any increase on the system response time. Again, a very stable system. But the thing to note now is we really are starting to create a lot more connections to the database because the middleware is now getting into a situation it's running at a higher rate and the statistical chance that all the connections used from one JVM being in use is increasing all the time. So literally, as I've been speaking, we're seeing the connections pop to over nearly 2,000 here. We're at 1,900 as I spoke, and before we were in the hundreds, and I, within a second or so, I imagine we're going to be greater than 2,000 fairly quickly. But you can see quite quickly that, you know, still at this point in time, the system is very predictable, very linear, and everyone's seeming great. And this is at the point where we're about 50% utilization on the system. Now, at 50% utilization on the system, we can see this is a point where our statistical chance of getting scheduled is two in one. As I crank up the utilization on the system, your chance of getting scheduled immediately is starting to get reduced. If you're starting to not get scheduled all of the time, we're start going to start seeing more variation in the response time. As the response time varies, we're more likely to have more application servers waiting 
and they're more likely to initiate more connections. So you can see as we crank up the utilization, we're more likely to basically get more variable response time, which is going to force the app servers to throw more connections at the database, which in its turn are going to get more and more unpredictable response time, and we're going to get ourselves into what is known as a race condition. And this race condition we very often call a connection storm, when basically we're initiating a storm of connection requests, but we're actually getting nothing back. And remember, as we showed in previous YouTubes, that actually logging on and off the database is quite an expensive operation. So this just compounds this effect, and we start going into a spiral of degrading performance. So I'm going to not double the performance at this point in time because you can see it's been quite well behaved. We've got over 2,000 connections to the database at this point. But what we're going to do is we're going to do it in smaller increments. So instead of doubling it, I'm just going to take it up to 400 milliseconds, so 0.4 of a second between each mouse click. So some fairly serious card players. And we're just going to jump the workload up a little bit more. And you can see that basically suddenly this small increment in work suddenly caused quite an impact on the system. Okay, So almost like a 50% increase in the workload, we saw almost twice as much CPU. We see this oh, disproportional response in the CPU utilization getting extremely busy. We're not seeing a proportional increase in the transaction rate. And we're now starting to see the transaction rate starting to become quite choppy. And we're starting seeing queuing in the middle tier, and we're seeing extended database response times. And for the first time, we're actually starting to see wait events inside the database through the ASH reports. And some of you may have seen some of these uh, the wait events in your life before. Latches on NQs, row cache objects, latch free, NQTX index contention, buffer busy waits, quite common wait events as and well, we get into the situation where we're starting to oversubscribe the machine, where the CPU is starting to get extremely busy, and we're starting to see more and more wait events. We're starting to see the CPU get busier and busier. And you can see now that the database connection pool that was at 2,000 is now approaching 6,000. Remember, we have a limit here of 6,144. So very quickly, we're actually getting to the situation where we're approaching our connection limits. And you'll notice the number of active connections on the database is massively oversubscribed compared to the number of cores on the system. It's now telling me I have 6,000 active requests into the database at this point in time. As a result, you can actually see we've completely oversubscribed the machine. So the response time has gone out of control. The weight events inside the database have gone completely out of control. Just looking at that, you can see NQTX index contention, contention events, and the throughput has dropped right off. And in fact, what we're starting to see is the monitoring of the thing is starting to become unpredictable. And even in fact, the CPU has dropped off because this machine has now actually rendered itself completely unstable. Um, and at this point in time, we've actually simulated a failure in the system. And then sometimes it starts to recover and it's erratically, you can see the transaction rate sometimes bounce back. But effectively what we've done is hang the system and try to use the keyboard and things like this becomes impossible. So getting debugging information out of such a system into this state becomes next to impossible.